everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure to check out my Instagram listed down below. I would love to have you follow me over there. I post lots of fun crafts, tips, tricks, hacks, all those fun things over on Instagram. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a cake topper using print and cut and layering some cardstock. This is super fun. We're going to use the offset feature. We're going to use some images from Design Space, plus bring in our own image, use some fonts. It's going to be a really, really fun tutorial, and I can't wait to show you guys how easy this is to make. So let's get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for Making a cake topper using print and cut is super fun and you can use a lot of different skills to make it look really cool and interesting and especially with the offset in Cricut Design Space, which is only for the computer, you can really make a lot of cool stuff. So what we're going to do is click upload and we're going to upload an image. Now I am going to drag and drop my files because it's a little bit easier. So what I have done is I've opened my folder. So what I'm going to do is from this folder, I'm just going to drag and drop each one individually. I just find that a little bit easier than hitting browse every time and having to go through all my folders. Now what I'm going to do is choose the word complex and click continue. Now what you'll see is that we have the checkered background, meaning that there is no background to our image. So go ahead, click apply and continue. What you'll see here is that you do have your little rainbow dash as her colored self. So we're going to select this one right here. Now I will say that this is not going to cut and that's fine. I don't need this little shadow. So I'm just going to click upload. So we'll go ahead and choose complex for this one as well. You can see the blue checkered background. She doesn't have a background. So go ahead, apply and continue and then select the print and cut pony. Click upload and we are good to go with our two ponies. Select each one of those and click add to canvas. Now they're going to probably be pretty large. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and make them much smaller just by changing their width. Now, one thing I do notice is that her eyes are transparent where they're white. I'm not sure if the other ponies are. So what I'm going to do is just pull her in front of the other pony and see if they turn pink pink when they go behind her. They don't. And these are actually not transparent. They just didn't keep the white. So now that we have the pony that we're going to use for our print then cut cake topper, we can add additional images. We can use print and cut. We can layer. There's all sorts of things that you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and look in my images and I'm going to find a rainbow because I know my little pony is all about the rainbows. So I'm just going to see and find a rainbow that I think I can work with with some cardstock because we're going to need to layer it if we don't do print and cut. So what I'm gonna just do is kind of scroll through here and just see what we have. And we're gonna look for this little cut option. Now this one's super cute because it's already like kind of 3D, but we can really make our own and do whatever we want with it, really be as creative as we can. So what I like to do is I'll usually select a couple that I like and then I'll go back and see if they look like they will work with what I want my image to look like. So this is just a fun way that you can kind of make your own designs, really play with it, make it your own, do whatever feels right for you. And like I said, you can do print and cut if you want. You can layer vinyl. You can do cardstock. It's really very much up to you. So I've got three rainbow options. So let's go ahead and add those over to our canvas. Now they may take a minute to load, which is totally fine. Usually if I select more than one or two images, it does take a minute to load. So let me move her out of the way and let's take a look at our rainbows. So I don't think now that I see this one a little bit bigger, I don't think I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. And I think this one is a little bit kind of what I'm going for. This one's almost too perfect. So let's use this one here. So I can see here that we have many layers, which is exactly what we want. And we're going to make our cake topper about seven to eight inches. So I'll just kind of get that sized to the size that we want it to be. Now our rainbow dash is going to sit kind of over our rainbow. So this is where we start to kind of build our design. So I want her to sit on top. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on her and I'm going to bring her to the front. Now I don't want this background to be black on mine. I think I'm going to use like a... Um, possibly a glitter cardstock, but I definitely don't want it black. So I'm going to just change it to a light gray. That way I can really see how everything's going to look. Now I want rainbow dash to be quite a bit bigger because I do want her to stand out pretty well on top of this cake. 
then we can kind of add the name and whatever else we want to add to our design. This is all up to you and how you want to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make this cake as mine. Why not? And you can make your design however you want using whatever fonts you want, anything like that. But I'm going to use a fun font that I have. That I want to say is called like balloons. So I'm just going to look up, yes, birthday balloons. So this is a super fun font and it's really, really cute. Now, I don't know if this one um, arches really well or if this one has capital letters, but I don't think that it does. Oh, it does. Okay, let's go ahead and use the capital letters for this just because it'll be a little bit more uniform. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my text and kind of put it over my rainbow. I'm going to have my text curve a little bit so it follows that curve of the rainbow. Now, if you want to use curve, you can't ungroup it or anything like that. So you have to just use the curve first. I'm going to go ahead and curve my text a little bit. And I will make my text bigger as I play with the curve. Because obviously we want the name to stand out quite a bit on this. Because it is for a birthday. So I just sort of get it sized about where I think it's going to look pretty good. And again, I do want it to follow that curve of our rainbow. I think that looks pretty fantastic. So let's go with it. The next thing that I'm going to do to this is I'm actually going to add an offset. I want to add that offset so that I have something for the letters to stick to, but I also am going to add a couple of offsets so that it really stands out against the rainbow. So my first offset, I'm going to make it pretty big because I'm going to actually put that one on with our rainbow offset. So I want that one to be pretty wide, take up quite a bit of space, and that way you have a little bit of playroom. All right, that looks like a pretty good offset. So once I've set my offset for my words, which decided to disappear, once you have the offset set for your words, what I wanna do is I wanna take the offset for my word and the offset for my rainbow, and I wanna weld those together. I'm welding them together so that it's all one piece and it'll cut better and it'll be easier to place everything together. Go ahead and drag that back down under everything, and now you'll see that you have this big gray piece that's going to be the backer for our um, cake topper. Now, I want to add some additional offsets to the name to make it stand out even more. So what I'm going to do is click Offset, and I'm going to make smaller offsets, just a few of them, just to make that name really pop off of the background. You can make as many as you want. Do whatever colors you want. It's really up to you. But what I'm doing is just selecting the name, going to offset, and then making smaller offsets as I go. So you'll see like I have a 0.2 offset here, so I'll go ahead and apply that one. And it is going to be hard to see because it instantly makes it black, so you can just change it to a different color so that you can see it better to see if you like the way that it looks. I think I'm going to do one more, and I'm going to do this one at like 0.1. And I'm going to go ahead and click apply as soon as it kind of comes up. Apply. And now you can kind of get an idea of how this is going to look. I think this is going to be really, really, really cute and super duper fun. Now we can add anything else that we want to it. So if you'd like to add a number or whatever really makes your heart happy, you go right on ahead and do it. So let's go ahead and add the number five. And we'll use that same um, text just because I think it'll look really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger because I do want that size on this and we're going to put the five over here so that it sort of balances out where rainbow dash is now i want to do the same thing i want to make the five pop a little bit off of our rainbow so i'm just going to make those offsets again and since i remembered what sizes i made my offsets i should have no problem adding that additional size offsets to these so again what i'm going to do is make that first large offset I'm gonna go ahead and choose that offset and the offset for the rainbow, and I want to weld those again. That way they, again, cut as one piece. You can right click on that and click send to back. That way you can see what you're doing. Then I'm gonna take my five and I'm gonna do another offset. And I believe my next offset was an offset of three. So I'll go ahead and apply that. And then I wanna do another offset and I'm gonna do an offset of two. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And then I will do one final offset, but again, I'm going to just change the color so I can see it. And I'm going to do one final offset with an offset of one. Now, again, they, the offsets sometimes are the same color, so it's hard to see them. You just kind of need to play around with it. 
but we're going to change all the colors anyways once we pick out all the colors of our cardstock. We're going to use some glitter cardstock. We're going to use all sorts of fun things to make this cool rainbow. So I'm super excited to show you how to do this. We're also going to be using foam tape, just all the fun things so that we can have this really nice cake topper. Now you can check the sizing of your entire cake topper by selecting the entire design just to see if that might be too big for the cake that you're going to use. Now I'm making mine pretty big so that you can see it, but you will want to definitely kind of keep in mind the size of cake that you're going to use. So for this one, it is 13 inches wide, but that's the entire thing. So if I were to move Rainbow Dash out of the way, I can resize this to make this larger, smaller, whatever I want to do, but you want to make sure that you resize everything together. If you don't, the offsets are not going to line up anymore. So once I've done that and I'm pretty satisfied with the way everything is looking, all my sizing, I think my rainbow dash looks pretty good. I may add a few more little elements. It's really up to you and how you want to do this. But again, color wise, it's totally up to you. I've got all these fun offsets. I think what I want to do is I'm going to do the numbers in white because I think they will look really pretty and I'm going to do the name in white as well. That way it really pops from the background. Once I've changed those and kind of know what color I'm going to do there, I can kind of play around with the offset colors. Now one thing that I will say is sometimes it can be a little bit confusing to see what offsets are at the top. So I will sometimes just move the name off and out of the way and the number off and out of the way it makes it easier to select the next offset and figure out which offset you're actually working with. Now I'm just going to pick some random colors so we'll just kind of make it look like a rainbow but I may change them depending on what colors I end up choosing to go with my um, cardstock what I have actually in stock. So that looks pretty good so let's do orange for the next ones so I'm just going to select the next one back. And let's go ahead and just do orange. And again, really, I can change these colors and I didn't, that one I grabbed the wrong offset for. So you may need to kind of play around with this and figure out where the offset is that you need to grab, but don't worry, you'll get it. It's totally fun, super easy to do. You will have no problems. So I'm gonna go with yellow on that one and then yellow for this one. And you kind of get an idea of what you're, um, design is going to look like. Now, if you wanted to add additional offsets to make this like a full rainbow behind your name, you can absolutely do that. I would, however, recommend starting with your back offset and using that as the offset for your next size. So I'm going to choose offset and let's go ahead and make this one a four and then click apply. So if you want to make additional offsets, that's totally fine. Grab your number, choose offset, and then choose the size of the offset that you want. So for this one, I want to go a little bit bigger than that back one, which I know was like three. So let's see how four looks and if that's going to be big enough because we want to make them so that we have plenty of, of space. Now, again, this may take a minute to actually process what it's doing. Sometimes I think it just gets a little bit confused. And you can see here that it gave me a really weird size. I don't know why it did that because I chose a size four and it gave me another size one. It's very finicky and sometimes you just have to play with it and really kind of let Design Space figure out what it's doing. But I will also say, make sure that you're saving your project while you're doing this. So I'm gonna save this as MLP Cake Topper and that way I can find it. If anything goes wrong, I can bring it right back up from the point at which I saved it. Design space really doesn't like to work and sometimes you lose everything that you just did. So again, I'm going to give it a chance to give me that 0.4 offset. Again, it's, it's very finicky. It doesn't like to do things. It doesn't like to do what I want it to do because again, that is the size of the 0.1 offset and it's really making me annoyed. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it and let's just bring this five over here and see if we can figure out a better sizing. Every once in a while, it's really going to just drive you crazy. You're going to have to just play with it and see if you can make bigger sizes because see, this is the size six, which is the next size up really from that. So I want this to be a four and sometimes it just doesn't want to work when it's on top of other stuff. As you can see, it looks fine. So let's go ahead and apply it and see how it fits over our other items. 
it might be a little bit too big, but it actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that one. And what I'm going to do is drag it all the way down under my yellow layer, and I'm going to change this layer to blue. So again, you can really just play with this, figure out what works, figure out how many layers you're going to need to do to make your cake topper the way you want it to be and how you want it to pop out from your image. So I've just played around with it a little bit, kind of changed up the colors. Like I said, really do whatever you want, whatever makes you happy and however you want your design to look. The background, I'm going to try to do it in a grayer cardstock. We'll see kind of what I have in stock and what works well. And then we'll do some rainbow colors for the rest of this. We'll add some glitter where we can. It's just going to be really, really cute. But the main concern is this little guy and it's cutting. So the one thing that I want to make sure that I do is I'm going to add a little bit larger of an offset to her just because I don't trust Cricut. And so she already has a little offset you can see, but by adding a little bit larger of an offset, it will help design space cut her a little bit better. So I'm going to just size this down to like a 0 0.05 offset. So it's pretty small and I'm going to click apply. Now what I'm going to do is change the color of this so it's relatively close to the color that is already on her. So that light blue actually works out really nicely. But again, you can kind of play with the color and just find one that's really close to the color that she already is or already has. But I think this light blue is going to work out really well. What I want to do now is select my rainbow dash, which is the pony, and select that offset. And I want to flatten them together, which is down here in the lower right hand corner. That tells Design Space that that's all going to cut as one piece, but it is going to give her a little bit more um, girth to the little tips of her tail, which sometimes will rip, and it's going to do some of that with the hair and the tip of the ears, and it's just going to give her a little more option of like not cutting off centered. So now that we have everything set up the way we want it to be, all we simply need to do is click Make It. But again, click Save before you hit Make It because you've made some changes and you want to make sure that your design is saved. If you have a little asterisk next to your name up here, the type of your file, it means that you haven't saved it after doing some changes. So I always like to make sure that asterisk is not there when I go to click make it. Go ahead and click make it and I'm going to show you the different mats that we're going to have because we're going to have several and we're going to have a print and cut design as well. So here we have our little rainbow dash and she is ready to be print and cut. Then we have all of our different parts of our rainbow pieces. So that's the name and the clouds. Then we have the offset for the background. Here are the different offset pieces and the pieces of the rainbow that are going to need to be cut out and pasted together to make our design. So it's really fun, really, really easy to do this. And you can make some really cool looking cake toppers. So let's go ahead and get ready to print. So what I'm going to do is click continue and I'm going to choose send to printer. Now, these are super important tips that you want to use when you're doing this. So number one, if your image comes out looking like this, it usually is going to print correct. But if it freaks you out, just close this and click send to printer again. Typically, the second time it's going to bring it up and it's going to look normal. But every time I've done that, it prints just fine. So I'm not too concerned. Now, I do want to leave my bleed on and I want to use my system dialog. What's going to happen is when I hit print, it's not going to print it to my printer right away. It's going to give me the option to go into my printer settings, which is super important if you want really good, vibrant, good looking prints. Go ahead and choose the word preferences. Under preferences, you're going to see that you have quite a few settings. And I find that using plain paper, bright white paper with my cardstock works just fine. I am going to leave the, I'm going to leave color on, but under quality, I want to change it to high. There's one more setting that's super important. Go under more options. There is a high speed print option. Turn that off. That high speed print option tends to be what causes the issues with the lines on your print. Then simply click OK and click print and it will send it to your printer. The first thing that we'll cut is our little rainbow dash. So what I want to do is I'm going to line her up on to my cardstock mat and I might actually end up switching this to my green mat because this one isn't particularly sticky so I might end up switching it but we'll see how it does we're gonna go ahead and load this and what's gonna happen is the machine is going to read the lines so the box that is around her and that's how it knows where to cut so it's really important that this box prints so that it knows what it's doing So 
So it's cut around our rainbow dash, so go ahead and unload. And then what I do is I flip my mat over and I remove my image from my mat by flipping it over. And you'll see that we have this really well cut design. I'm actually really surprised at how even this cut. It has been giving me a lot of trouble lately, so the shock is real. So now what we want to do is get ready to cut the rest of our cardstock. So I have all of my cardstock laid out, ready to go, all in the order that it's going to cut. So I'm just going to go ahead and load the machine with all of our cardstock, get everything cut out, and then we can assemble. We are ready to assemble. So we're going to start with the offsets because those are going to be kind of our bottom layers and I think those are going to be like the easiest way to start. So I'm using foam tape. This is just tape from the Dollar Tree. You can honestly get this pretty much anywhere. But so what I did was I sort of just kind of saw how big that was where it sits just to make sure that it sits in the correct place and then all I'm going to do is cut a few pieces of foam tape. You don't need a lot. I usually just do kind of one in the middle and then one on each end and that'll make it sit up from the backer just enough so that it looks really cool and 3D. Now these are sticky on both sides so you'll want to peel off the little plastic backing and then you'll want to make sure that you set this down exactly where you need it to sit on to your back. Now I, this paper is all from Michaels. This is their really pretty holographic paper. I thought that would look perfect and it's so shiny. So I'm super excited to see how this all comes out. So basically all I'm going to do is get this lined up where I'm happy with it. It's not perfect, but it'll do. That's not too bad. And then I'm going to do the orange and then the red. And they're all just done in the exact same set of steps. The next part we are going to put the words and the number on and I'm going to use art glitter glue. This is a fantastic glue for working with cardstock because it's not super wet and then I recommend having some tweezers handy for this because I find they make everything just so much easier when you're trying to put the cardstock down because then you're not going to get glue all over your hands. Don't worry this glue does dry 100% clear so you're not going to notice it if you accidentally smudge it or anything like that. So what I do is I just get the glue on and I do use my finger a little bit just so I can kind of move it around, figure out where it sits and there we go. Simple as that. So we're going to go ahead, glue down all of our letters and our number. We'll let this dry and then Here is the finished cake topper. I think this came out really good. The rainbow did not come out perfect. That's my fault. I misaligned some of them and they needed to go the right way and I messed it up, but it still looks really, really cute. Now, I didn't put sticks in this only because I couldn't find mine. So what I do recommend, I will link down below, but I like to use paper straws. And what I would recommend doing is adding a few paper straws to the back of this. So I would put some paper straws across the back here where the name is. And then I would also do one right here just for some stability. And then I would put a paper straw here to hold it up, a paper straw here to hold it up, and then one here as well. And you'll want to make sure that they're long enough so that this little pony's legs don't get stuck in the cake. I think this came out really cute. This was so fun to do. 
super simple. You guys saw how to design it from start to finish. So I think now you guys are going to be all set to make your own awesome cake toppers using print and cut. You can add as many print and cut characters as you want and elements as you want. You can add tons of offsets, no offsets, really. The sky is the limit. Your creativity, go crazy with it. Make them super fun. Have lots of fun making these because they're going to be so fun. Everyone's going to love seeing these at parties. They're going to be asking you, oh, where did you buy it? And you'll be able to tell them, oh, I made it. So I hope you guys had an awesome time checking out this tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. And if you have a favorite My Little Pony, I would love to know which one it is. I hope you guys always have a wonderful day and happy crafting. Thank you.